Brony Geeks proudly present What's the Topic? Warning, the following audio may contain language that isn't suitable for younger audience. The opinions expressed are solely those of the speakers themselves and may contain spoilers of the genre discussed. Brony Geeks makes no claim to ownership of any of the various properties discussed. Listener discretion is strongly advised. For today's What's the Topic? We have top five characters, personal opinion only. It's not a power That's ranking, it. it's just who we like the best. As you notice, our panel is at two members for this particular show. I'm wearing an Iron Man shirt. Will Parker get better? Wish you well. I'm sure Tony would say raw in your honor. So. Raw, bitch, raw. So, this, this is the group we're running with today. We have me as host. Tony is up top. There's no Tony, though. There's only Zool. That's right. So, put some respect on that name. I am Choose Your Character. If you played Smash Bros. or most fighting games, very popular line. Had to go with it for our top five. We'll be going away from the top five shortly. But for now, we have a topic that we both really wanted to get in on. And it was very, very easy to prep for. Because when you think of your favorite characters, so many names just rapidly pop into mind. You got a lot of stuff going on. I will say this did take me a little bit to get, like, my top two good but after that it, it took a minute to, to like really bring it in just tighten up that list because i mean once you start getting like around four or five you're like who's getting it's like, cut it's like damn i don't want to slight him but damn it's like we got a couple honorable mentions on there so we'll get address those at the very end there we do want to make it like a top 10 list there's a lot of stuff going on there and those videos tend to be longer and what's the topic we've been very good on time thus far and want to keep it for now <laughs> we'll see how this one goes and then might end up like with some philosophical debate somewhere off tangent because that's what we do that's at Grown right. Geeks so be yeah, sure to you know much. check the Facebook page be sure to check out Gag Sports Network if you want to see me and Tony post all the time about sports topics that we know we love and we got a lot of good stuff going on and be sure to check out our anchor.fm slash Grown Geeks for the audio only content of everything we put out on your favorite streaming services we're there we're over a thousand listens we thank you for that we'll keep on pushing we're gonna, next push 2000 starts today Anyway, before we get too in depth in this list, how are you doing? And then how do you want to discuss order? I'm good. You know, this is something that I really look forward to because you have your general consensus on the best characters mm. in comics. Well, any genre, really. Any genre. But it's good to hear opinions. And I know we're going to, we're, we're really going to be different on this one. Because just because I go back a little further, I'm not gonna go back too far on this, but I got some out of left field. That it's gonna shock. You. I already know that. That's yeah. what you do. That is what you do. That's who you are. If you haven't checked out our top five series, anytime anybody was in the 2000s, Tony was pulling out shit from like 1970, 1980. Like he was pulling went, out these old, old classics that still hold par. So I mean, like I went, like I went to the 50 on a couple of them, right. just because. I mean, they don't get enough love because the only thing Hollywood knows now is remakes. That's all they doing. And it's like, people don't know Scarface was the third remake. So it's like, yeah, that was a remake, dude. That wasn't an original movie. I didn't even, like, fuck with Scarface like that. It wouldn't even make, like, my top five mob movies. I'm not even going to lie. Hey, don't, That's don't a whole other start topic, that. But because, like, you know, my mind is like, well, what is... Mm, that is another like... topic we could put out there. But, I mean, I'm just saying, best mob movie ever would probably be a best way of addressing that. I'm writing it down because we're both forgetful Do that, because, you know, I'm forgetful as hell. And we know you love talking movies, especially the horror movie genre. I'm sure we'll have something special come October. Man, if you have not seen Fear Street, oh my God, watch that. You were that shit was down with that? That shit was surprisingly good. Oh, okay. Fear I was Street. surprised by it. I, I didn't know it was three parts. So when I watched the first one, I was like, oh, you know, that was pretty good. Wait a minute. Part two. Click. Wait, part three. I did nonstop six-hour movie. Just clicking like it was it was pretty good. All right. You might go watch it. High recommendation from Tony. Might have to do a review on that, depending. But our next movie, well, it's not movie review. Next TV review, we'll be covering He Man, Master of the Universe. The new one. The he Man was a revelation. Was it revelations or some shit. It was something like that. But I mean, we will be discussing He Man in all its glory or non glory. I have yet to see it, but I'll be getting there very very shortly, and we'll have a in-depth breakdown on that hopefully we'll have a three-man panel for that but we'll talk about that when we get there get better wheel you soft fucker 
all the prayers, all the blessings up, man. Much love and appreciation. <laughs> um, who do you want to have take point starting at five, working it on down? I think the starting five, you know, you go ahead and go first because I'm pretty sure you're going to have some people on there. I'm like, who? There are going to be a lot of characters on this <laughs> cool. list that you're going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? And there will be a lot of spoilers ahead because when I discuss these characters, I want to discuss why I like them, the arcs that got them to where they are, but I'll try and keep it as compact as possible for time management. For my number five, he is from this particular anime. That is All Might. See? From My Hero Academia, he's not my number five, though. It is the villain whose action figure is right here. Kind of hard to see. It is Dobby, the villain from the League of Assassins, the man with blue fire. He's got a badass. What's the name of his anime? My Hero Academia. It is very good. It's five seasons. Will would highly recommend, Sam would recommend, and David would recommend. Like, it Hold is on. a very good one. It is one of the only mangas that I actually keep up with reading online. I'm caught up currently. But Dobby from the League of Villains is one of my favorite characters. He's got a arc in the manga that has yet to make it to the TV show that is just absolutely killer. His demeanor, the way he goes about his business, the way he handles himself, I very, very much fuck with. And like, not even gonna lie, if I was gonna have a superpower, the power of fire would easily be a top two power for me. And seeing a villain be able to portray this skill set that way i really fuck with the character i really like dobby dobby is my number five i'm not going to break too much of the arc down because it hasn't yet hit tv but it's about to it is like right on that burner there so i can't watch it anywhere you can watch it on crunchyroll and on hulu now fuck with neither one of those damn it it might be on another streaming service i just haven't looked at those those are where i go primarily for what i need crunchyroll is straight japanese arc so you'll need, you know, subtitles and all that. But I know that's not an issue for you as you watch Jujutsu, primarily in Japanese. So. And my child, my oldest child, forces me to watch Korean horror movies in Korean <laughs> with subtitles. So I'm like, God damn it. It's like you have God. to be looking for the specter and reading. But continue. Right. Sure. I'm like, I'm trying to watch the fucking violence. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I don't even know if I want to rank these like. You're going to have to. This is a top five. You can't be like Will and just come in soft. I need like a hard definitive number. You can come back oh, and readjust just... later on, but for this video, I need a solid five. Okay, so my solid five, I, must, I think I'm going to take from you because I know you so well, and this is our one of our favorite characters. No, 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 no. Huh? Vegeta. I, my, my boy's at one. My boy is at one. I, I had to take him. I'm like, because I'm sitting here looking like We're gonna I'm missing somebody. We're going to double up on a few, and this was probably one of them. I said, I'm missing somebody. I'm missing somebody. Oh, shit. Yeah, let me. Yep, yep. And then I had to look, say, is he above him? Is he above him? It's like, and he barely is at five. He could literally be up to two. I mean, that's how close all of this is to me. And I'm going to say... While he did start out as a villain, as a main, the, one of the main villains, I think when I, what got me behind him was in the Boo Saga. Unequivocally, think, the Majin Vegeta was just... <laughs> it wasn't even that. When he sucker punched Trunks and, and said, fly, fly him away, and Piccolo knew what was going on because, you know, Super Namekian here or what the fuck ever he had. No, he's just ridiculously smart. And he was like, oh, shit, we need to leave. Because then Vegeta did the thing I, that nobody, if you saw it from the beginning, you would never think he would do. And that sacrifice himself for somebody else. And, like, you forgot the key conversation, though, right before that. What? Which, when he was talking to Trunks? With Piccolo. Piccolo was literally, well, he gave the conversation with Trunks, take care of your mother, protect her, get away from yeah. her. Yeah. And then Piccolo's like, you know you're going to hell, right? And Vegeta's so. like, I'm going to protect my family. I don't care. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, why? I mean, that right there came real close to getting a tear out of me. I was like, yes. I have it. It's like a, cut, a couple movies have damn near made me cry. Like uh, the one with Bruce Willis, when he blow himself, when he go to the asteroid. Oh, shit. All right. I'm going to send that movie to you. I have it. And um, Coco, 
when he was singing to Coco was so oh, sad, Mike. Man, oh, when he oh, was no, no oh, we're not going on this song. tangent. Keep going. <laughs> no. I make a lesser man cry, but I cried. I ain't. Oh gonna, my god, that right there, I was it. like, got my feels. I was like, what was that? What what's what's going on? <laughs> but that that arc right there, and then seeing him in hell where he got to keep his body, but he was still talking shit. That's my boy. That is so. He knew where he was going. He knew what he was about. He still and he didn't fucking care. Him. And one of the things I really like about him, he's never called Goku Goku, ever. It's just Kakarot. Kakarot. Kakarot or fool or monkey or something. He was just, it was always like, What negative. is wrong with you? So, Kakarot. Clown. <laughs> that was the one. It wasn't monkey. Freeze always called them monkeys. It was clown. It was. So, <sighs> you, took my, you took the prince of all Saiyans. Hey, man. But, I'm sorry, but I knew he was on your list. I'm like, yeah. Good character, but you're not, you're not it's wrong. like it's opinion. It's not much. It's not much between two and five though. It, it's literally me splitting hairs. And that's probably the only only anime character that made your list. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so coming in, is it wrong that I don't consider him anime? I really don't. He's he became very very mainstream in DBZ because of its run on Toonami. Yeah, really elevated its status to American culture. I mean, like it. DBZ, Naruto, and One Piece dominated Toonami, and the next thing you know, everyone branched out from there. But that's another conversation for another day. For my number four, I have an anime I just recently finished, and I didn't realize it comes back until 2025, so I'm kind of... Pissed. I got kind of, yeah. There's a lot of waiting time here, but if they do it right, I'll be okay. Um, at number four, I have Luck from this anime, Black Clover. And... It's a very good one. It's like 170 episodes. The first 80 will be in English, and then what I like it. You, you know, like I, you know what I like. It's about magic. magic. It's magic and demons. So yep. I mean, Black Clover. Yeah, um, Luck is not even the main hero. He's not even like in the top five most important characters for that anime. But the story of Luck as being one of the premier, you know, groups of the, he's. The bl- one of the black bulls, he's got such a backstory that you're just like, once they reveal his backstory, you'll literally just be like, damn, this happened to you and you came out like this. He's a dude who just wants to fight everybody. He wants to fight the strongest and he's just all about messing around and having a good time. And like, that is my kind of character I can easily get behind. <laughs> And then later on in one of the other arcs, when he has his breakdown after everything that happens, man, you get all of the feels that you did not think you were to get. And man, I, I almost cried in that one too. So that that was a really well done anime arc and I was very happy with it. Once you get there, you'll know. it's The first five episodes are kind of a slow burn. After that, you're just going. Okay. So your number four. All right, my number four is, I want to say it was relatively outside of the DC slash Marvel continuities. Ooh, I think I know where you're going. I want to hear you out. But since this, he's their characters and his team has been acquired by DC, which I just hope that he's used right. And that's Grifter from Wildcats. Mm-hmm. What the thing that gets me about Grifter is, I want you to think of Wolverine, Green Arrow, and Batman, and mix them into one person. It's a really bad attitude. He he literally gives no fucks. The thing about him is, not only is he an expert marksman with both hands with gun, throwing knives, and melee weapons. But he has telekinesis, telepathy, and advanced intuition. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. And he has a healing factor. I mean, what the fuck? You saw Flashpoint Paradox, correct? Great, great art. You saw Grifter in there, correct? Yeah, he handled his business. (laughs) Even though they all got fucked up, he he killed people after he died. Let's not forget that. He shot an Amazon in the face 
from the bottom of a building after he died. When you when you think of badass, he literally, if you if he came into the DC universe like he would, he literally would would be in the argument for best assassin next to Deathstroke. Easily. He might can take Deathstroke out. I would love to see that fight. DC, if you listen, I would, I would love to see Grifter versus Deathstroke. And then one of those two versus Lady Shiva at some point, but that's another uh, conversation. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but he, he will beat you. I think he will beat you. In a, in a, in a just fight. Not hand-to-hand -hand because, no, that's her shit. But Weapons and weapons and everything all goes. Yeah, he he murked her. But that's that's my number four. Like I said, he was in wild. He was in um Wildstorm. His name is Cole Cash for those who want. To. But code name Brooke. That's that's a solid one. And then you mentioned my number three while you were discussing Grifter. I, I know he's on your list, but like he, he is. But I left him off just because I knew you had him. But like I said. <laughs> It was like split hairs, and once I said, you know what, Brent got him, I can just move him down one. Yeah, because like, he is. There he is. Right over here. There he is. Deathstroke. My favorite assassin. I was introduced yes. to him at a very early age, because I was watching Teen Titans, they kept saying Slade, 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 or Wilson. It's like, who the hell is this man? Start doing some research. Started reading some comics. Started getting a better understanding of who he is, what he's How about. How badass he is. His healing factor, his skills, his hand-to-hand -hand combat, the fact he's killed gods, he became the god of war at one point. Like, this dude has such an accolade list that they properly did him right in Arkham Origins, where he literally 1v1 Batman to a draw. Like, they didn't give anybody a winner. They're just like, it's a draw. You must know, Batman has never beaten him one-on-one. -on -one, ever. Which is saying a lot, because Batman's beaten pretty much everybody 1v1. Destro? Yep. Not on the list. He's never done it. No version of Batman has beaten any version of Destro. Healing factor, genius. He's ma expert tactician, marksman, hand-to-hand -hand combat, swords. Like, you literally pick a weapon. This dude could probably kill you with a paperclip. Like, this is that he, dude. The only per oh, I'm, Yeah, he probably won't be on our list. But it's only one person that I think is a better shot in DC, and that's Deadshot. It's his nickname, Deadshot. One shot, one kill. That's probably that's the only moniker. person in DC that's a better shot than De uh, Destro. He, he was properly done, I thought, in the Green Arrow TV show. I thought that was a good representation yes. of him. Yes. Titans was a good representation. Because yes. I mean, yes. that's probably the best one. Teen Titans was also good, like way back in the day. Not what they did with the, you know, not go. the cheap not version. Go. No. Don't ever say go. No, it's not mm -hmm. on the list. And then, like, his movie was actually really good. I really liked what they had going oh, on. Oh, you there. watched it? I watched the movie. I'm it was glad amazing. you watched that one. I enjoyed great, it. Right? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize his, like, marriage was as fractured as it was. I knew him and Jericho had a bad understanding, and then him yes. and Tara had a bad understanding. But, like, what he's got and going then the on other, there. And then his like, other daughter, his yeah. real daughter. Yeah. But there, there's some stuff going on there. So he's a very interesting right character. actually watching movies, I suggest. I like that. I, you're, I'm giving you shows you're watching and you're giving me movies I'm watching. We're better educating each other as geeks and that's what the geek community should do. It shouldn't just be you stand on your laurels and you talk shit to those that don't understand it. I mean, if they come at you, that's another conversation, but if they're trying to learn, give them some pointers. Geeks, don't try and be like just stand on top of the mountain and just piss on everybody. Yeah, because I say I'm, like I'm, I'm not even ashamed to say I suck at anyway. Yeah. We get there. We'll, Dragon we'll Ball Z, there. Castlevania, Ninja Scroll. Vampire Hunter D. That's about it for me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Don't ask me no more questions. And if you want to troll Tony, just talk anime. He'll just look at you and just. I'll just shut up. I'm like, like, shit. <laughs> but also, if I'm you like, want to get schooled in anime, go talk to David. He'll handle your business. Yeah, he'll make you feel dumb like me when I talk about anime. But who do you got at number three? Because I have this expert assassin destruct. All right, my number three. Again, I mean, these were splitting hairs. The King of Wakanda. Black Respect. Panther. Black Panther. And it's not even it's not even the movie that I'm talking about. The comic book I don't book care character. about I'm talking about the original Black Panther debuting to where no Wakanda has never been conquered by an outside force. Ever. 
and that's counting all Marvel and we're not continues. talking about we're not just talking about t'challa we're talking about t'chaka and all the ones before him undisputed number one black path and i think for me because what a lot of people don't understand is when you when you say wealthy comic book characters you think lex luther bruce wayne tony stark you never think about wakanda and wakanda can literally buy out stark and batman and still have money left over wakanda can actually buy out the entire planet i think it was like 700 billion yeah it was something ridiculous stark i think bruce is bruce is like 12 or 15 and tony's like seven like it's ridiculous no 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 tony's more tony's tony's net worth is more than bruce wayne's hmm, interesting bruce wayne is three because lex luther is right there with, with bruce wayne but Tony is a solid number two. But neither one can mess with T'Challa. And it's not just the Black Panther persona about him. It's the T'Challa persona, his non-superhero and how he treats his people. He tries to be a fair king. He tries to treat everybody the same. Now you're going to have uprisings. And they handle it According the way man. you're supposed to. If you have a problem with me, you come and talk to me. We'll fight about it. And whoever wins, that's who's right. And it's it works, as you can see in the movie. Well, you know, we're not going to talk about what might happen in Black Panther 2 when the apes break off and turns into other stuff, or Namor shows up. But oh, in man. the book, in the book, they're enemies. They're enemies for a reason. But it's to show a strong black person in comics especially like i said when i was growing up your geniuses look like me there were was, there wasn't was, a genius who had top 10 intellect in all of marvel that looked like chadwick it just wasn't yeah, a thing it was, t'challa was a whole other thing and it was it was kind of against the you know status quo to have from black guy let um, alone with the name black panther around the time that it came out up all these white people because let's not forget he beaten he he bodied captain america it wasn't even funny he bodied Captain America. Yes. Can he beat Batman? Easily. Hand to hand, even with all of Batman, give Batman prep time, he still will not beat Black Panther. I don't care what you say. Not happening. Hand to hand, the way his training is, with the heart shaped herb, with the vibranium. With his intellect on top of that. Mm -mm. It's not too many characters that can match up one on one with Black Panther. Unless we talk about Superman level characters like you know century or shit like that yeah but if we talk about super soldiers nah assassins nah not happening because mm -hmm. there's a reason this man was drafted to my team in the marvel draft absolutely needed his level of intellect his leadership his skills his funds everything there's so many yep. great factors that this character brought i was surprised he dropped as far as he did and i was like there's no way look, i'm gonna ignore this look i had a strict protocol i was going by for marvel and then it got fucked up somehow when people got put in the wrong slot for me, but that's okay. Hi, I, I that was me when I took Moon Knight. Fucker. <laughs> I was going to have an all-marine team, dude. I was working on it. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I just slid in. I'm like, I'm a Moon Knight because I need more chaos on my team because I didn't have enough chaotic characters as it was. But, yeah, Black Panther, man. That's, that's solid. So, now yeah, we're at your number two. My number two character, I might actually catch flack for, but I don't really care. Uh-oh. It is from the TV show Naruto. And this man... <laughs> I'm gonna be like, God damn, I can't even argue. <laughs> ...is Nara Shikamaru. And if you're familiar with the anime, this man is one of the laziest motherfuckers in the entire anime period. This dude, all he wants to do is lay down and stare at clouds and mind his business and just play shogi. He just you don't you don't want to do anything at all ever. But the thing about him is he's got an insane intellect. His shadow possession jutsu is next level. He's beaten people that he had no business handling. And the arc where he takes on the Akatsuki and gets revenge for them killing his master 
is literally one of the most brilliant tactical things I've ever seen executed, movie, TV, anime, whatever. Shikamaru's moment was one of the best I have ever seen, period. And this man is just as laid back as they come, but the minute you mess with his friends, or you mess with his nation, time to handle his business, and he's one of the best tacticians ever. Only his dad, I believe, was like even remotely close to his level of intellect, and then I think Kakashi was like right behind him. But Nara Shikamaru. Man didn't give a fuck about nothing, but like when he did, business got handled. Nara Shikamaru, number two. Hmm. I don't know who he is, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. He's definitely not the strongest character in that show, period, but I mean, he's he's up there in my mind. All right, so my number two is a character that I know too well, that I brought to all of your attention. You know where I'm going. Yep. Adam Brashear, better known as Blue Marvel. One of the lesser known Marvel characters, which is understandable because when you're as powerful as Blue Marvel is, he he got he gets the Superman treatment to where shit, we can only make so many characters that are strong enough to fight him. Eventually, we will run out of things for him to do. That's why he only comes out when it's literally universe threat. He is one of the few characters that I believe can one-on-one Superman. If they got into a fight, I think Blue Marvel can solo Superman. Because what was the trio that he was fighting that you brought up when we did the Marvel draft? There were three heavy hitters, and he took them all down. Oh, it was Sentry, Hulk, and his somebody else. I think oh, it was Thor. It was Thor. It was Thor, Sentry, and... Hyperion? Ah, uh, Hyperion. And it took all three of them to beat him all three fighting him at the same time to beat him and he still took out one he punched the century in the in the space one punch one punch man i mean it's literally like do we want to talk about all his power levels because he has like 80 powers and again the reason i i kind of like him is because again strong black man but fought the Korean War, got the two silver stars, got the medal of freedom from Kennedy in the book. But also he was forced to hide his skin because at that time they were only wanting white superheroes. So if you if you look at Blue Marvel, he has a full face mask, gloves, full body suit. When it was finally revealed that he was black, the government made him retire. Not mention that he saved the day. We can't have that. We need you to retire. So he was forced to retire. So I kind of get with him like, but just him him fighting. Uh, it's, it's not too much you can say bad about him. No, he's got hands and the rated D for everybody. And his, it, it, I looked up his power set after he did the Marvel draft, and man, that was a long just list after list after list of all the different stuff that he can do and where he ranks and stuff is just ridiculous. And that's why I didn't care about Adam Warlock. <sighs> I did not. Yeah. Because Blue Marvel. Adam Warlock was a sneaky, sneaky pick, but we all had our conversation on that. We had our piece. We we talked about what we needed to pertaining to that character in the Marvel draft, which is also on the YouTube, so be sure to give that a view if you haven't already made your way over there. We've done a lot of talk about that. I'm a, uh, let, me, let me just shout about people don't understand. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a put, put Blue Marvel on one of his accomplishments to the front, so we, it can be gay because just us so saying how strong he is. He captured Dr. Doom on his own. And Doom's the real list is nuts. The real Dr. Doom, not a Doom bot. He found him and captured him and brought him back on his own. 
I don't know how many heroes can do that. You would need like, uh, what's his face? Franklin's kid. Franklin Richards' kid. You know where Doom was hiding at the time? Probably in his own nation. Morgan Le Fay's apartment. And you do not fuck with Morgan Le Fay for how? obvious reasons. <laughs> but he found him. Broke in, got him, and I was like, bye. Took him away. That's that's impressive. I mean, it was a battle, though. Don't think it was like, come here, grab. Nah, it was Blue Marvel got hurt, but then he still, he still got his man. He is that dude. Anything else you'd like to add on your number two? No, nah, that's my dude. Now, we're, without further ado, we're going to talk about my dude you talked about briefly. We already know you're number one. Vegeta, Prince of All Saiyans. If you haven't heard it, you will hear it a million times in the anime. And Literally, he was introduced as a villain. He was a very good villain. He was very convincing. His battle with Goku, like even in the early stages of DBZ, was impressive to say the least. And then you add in all his battles afterwards being the third Saiyan in the series... Uh, he was putting hands on everybody. His his main was mistakes. He, the third? Are, he was the third. Trunks showed up first. T- Trunks time traveled. Oh, you mean Super Saiyan? Yeah, Super Saiyan. Because Trunks. Okay. Was yeah, Vegeta was the third Super Saiyan. Um, that was when, yeah, that's when Trunks murked Frieza. <laughs> just literally <laughs> showed up. Was, slash. Game over. Like Move over. on. Have yeah. a nice day. I still watched that to this day. Yeah, but, and then um, he was shown properly, I believe, in DBZ Abridged. They had a very very good understanding of the character and that. Team Four Star did a phenomenal job with that. You can go give them a view on that because I mean, if you don't, I've watched DBZ Abridged now. I don't know where you've been, but it was amazing. They captured Vegeta in all of his cocky, arrogant essence, and it was properly done. His biggest flaw is always that he lets the villain power up, but you can say that about literally every DBZ villain. Goku, especially Goku, because he loves that kind of fight. But like at the same the, time, like because the sales saga would have been two episodes long if Vegeta would have stopped fucking around. <laughs> Because Vegeta could have killed Cell at phase two and then just Easily. moved on with his life. Easily. So, yeah, his arrogance has always been his downfall, but that Majin Buu saga where he went Majin Vegeta and he went toe-to-toe with Goku by any means necessary. And then afterwards, after that battle, he had the father of the year moment, like literally take care of your mother, protect her. Knocks out his son, have Piccolo take him away. Literally knows he's going to hell, even though he's risking his life to save the planet and his family. Still goes down. You know another great Vegeta moment? We slap my Bulma, and he just goes, That's my Bulma. <laughs> That's my Bulma. <laughs> I was like, what the? F- Dude, did you really get stronger than Goku without training? Because he hit Bulma and knocked her out. Oh, my God. Man, I still watch that. Man, that's my boy. My everybody's like, what the fuck is Vegeta? Because literally, he... that was the god of destruction that backhanded his wife without hesitation. That's my Boma. And he just went apeshit, put hands now, on he Beerus until he got serious. He didn't do a lot of damage to Beerus, but he did make Beerus bleed. Let's not forget that. <laughs> he did get some blood out of him. Because Beerus was, was kind of like. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? Is- Wait All a right, minute. Cool. Now we're going to settle business. And then he put hands on Vegeta. But Vegeta had his moment of just, I mean, his eyes rolled all the way into his head. He just went pure Saiyan rage. And he I think he gone. had like all, all those veins popped up. And he was like, oh, no. And no. if you haven't kept up with the manga, you should. He's be- being trained to become the next god of destruction. Hey, just hey, saying. I haven't watched. I don't read the manga. I said spoilers I kinda- in this. It's amazing. He gets figured, purple hair. It's awesome. I kind of figured that. I kind of figured that's what he was going. Yeah, uh, Whis is training Goku to be an angel, and Beerus is training Vegeta to be a god of destruction. I thought you had to be smart to be an angel. Goku's dumb as fuck. Yeah, but he can I tap into angel powers. But that that it's Goku. He's the main character. It's what's supposed to happen. Anyway. Oh yeah, because I haven't seen the Moro arc yet. That hasn't come out on television yet. The manga is already done and wrapped up for that one. They're on to the next one, which yeah. is just mind-blowing where they're going with that but anyway vegeta's my boy he's my number one if you've seen me from the beginning like in grown geeks you know this it's i will go to bat for this character even though there are times where like even i have to admit yeah he does some dumb shit from time to time it happens dbz characters aren't known for brilliance usually i'll see it's so many uh, now i'm thinking about when he fought pui pui (laughs) he was just (laughs) really and he just kind of like having fun. Oh, just like, cracks him. That's ridiculous. Yeah, see, I'm not even mad. I like, yeah, I like. 
That's my dog. But like I said, Blue Marvel, Black Panther, Griffin, Vegeta, they're all like interchangeable <laughs> depending on what mood you're kind of feeling at the time. Like Vegeta, like, like, like if he was a black Super Saiyan, like he would probably be a little bit higher on the list. But Vegeta's still that no. dude. Like, Vegeta have have would have been like a Marine. I'm just saying attitude. if they had the Marine Corps, Vegeta would have been in it. He would have been running that show. Yeah, he'd have, but he'd been kicked out a lot though, because <laughs> he don't follow orders at all. And he followed Freeze's orders for a good minute there, but yeah. Continue. We have your <laughs> number one. I mean, is it even? I mean, with how much apparel you're wearing of his, I'm pretty I mean, sure this, it's apparent. Hold on, wait. This... <laughs> <laughs> and then you bring the Batman literally. shirt on top of it, so you're just like you're all. It's, it's literally. Oh, and you know we got. The Batman hat. I should have made you wear that for the show. That would have been just hilarious. I could have, but then my headset would have been all over the place. Oh, I got a foot cramp. Ah! Being oh. old sucks, folks. Carry on. <laughs> Suffer through the pain. Oh, you called out Will earlier on, so this is karma immediately. Ah! It didn't even oh, wait can... 30 minutes. Ooh, I can take the pain, though. No, just don't mess with Will, because you get karma immediately. He ain't even Fuck here for it. You don't even know. He just like, Tony Stark and crap. <laughs> All right, so of course Batman, Bruce Wayne. Um, the reason I like Batman, I grew up on Batman. Is it's literally the the this is what you become if you put your mind to it. Peak human conditioning, his mind, arguably the greatest mind in DC Comics. His fighting skills. He learned all. He learned almost two hundred fighting skills in seven years. That's asinine. We don't even know anime characters that can do that, unless I'm wrong. You have to ask David. Oh shit! Fuck. All right. Well, I'm a novice compared to him. I'm just putting respect. It's like too. just just the feats that he do, and I know people give him shit because he is just a man. But you have to understand, he is just a man that can take down God, and he's done it multiple times. He took down Darkseid. He's taken down Superman. He's taken down Wonder Woman. He's taken down all the Green Lanterns. He even took Metron's chair. The Mobius chair. Made him the god of knowledge. Which he now, was already before. No, I guess... This, I'm saying this scary. intellectually, he was up there. But yeah. Yeah. He, he's one of the smartest characters in comics, not just DC. Because he figured out Joker's but, identity on the chair, correct? All He figured out all three of them because it was three Jokers. Which I kind of had a feeling, if you look at the history of the Joker, it's always been three different personas for Joker. It's, it's always, when you get a story, you might see, you know, the gangster. You might see the psychotic, or you might see the an an yeah, anarchist. You'll see one of those three. It's, it's like, damn. And they all dress different. So it's like, ah, you know, killing joke Joker is different from death in the family Joker. Different Jokers. So yeah, he got he got the knowledge, but then it's like certain things he wants. He's like, okay, this is too much. But just showing the willpower that you can do, because at a young age, losing both your parents in front of you, he could have went down another path. But instead of that, as he got older, he decided, you know what? Let's make sure this doesn't happen to somebody else. I'm gonna do my best to to protect my city. And I can I get behind that. I don't agree with everything he does, but it also makes him a better character. Because he's very reason, very complex. It's one reason I don't like like the Superman characters. Very you know, stoic. They're very once you no, they pick up their shtick, that's it. You can't do this. We can't do that. No, Batman's like I'm not going to kill you, but I'm gonna hospitalize you for weeks. I'm gonna break every bone in your body so I don't have to worry about you. But let's not forget, Batman has not killed people, but he has also not saved people, which resulted in their death. Batman has used guns, people. In the past, his car had machine guns on him. Let's not forget that. It's just the way he is now. And the complexity of him as a character, it's always been a debate of, is Bruce Wayne the facade or is Batman the facade? Which one is his true identity? And you always got to think, when, how do you, when do you see him more as Batman? Did Bruce Wayne die in the alley? And this is just an act he's doing so he can keep being Batman? 
or is Batman the ends to the means to help Bruce Wayne? So it's like it's how you want to interpret the character, and that's what I like about it. It's like you just sit there and be like, "Damn!" And that's not even talking about his rogues gallery. Like, yeah. We haven't even gotten that's there rogue, yet. Look, it's it's two rogues galleries that I believe are the best in comics. You can argue for either one of them: Batman, Spider Man. That's it. Two best rogues galleries. Flash doesn't have any bad ones, but yeah, I put Spider Man's above his. I mean, you, the Sinister yeah. Six. I mean, you're done. That's it. Just all the Spider Man's Rose Gallery is great. And do you hear that Kingpin is coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yes. Yes. And it's the same guy. They kept the same guy. Who actually played a Marine mm. in Platoon? Mm. Was it Platoon? No. I'm old. I remember the movie, but yeah, he was a crazy guy. And he was also on Law and Order. Can't remember his name. I think it was great like Vincent D'Onofrio, but that's, yeah. I, I don't I'm, know. I'm not for knows, sure on that. Someone knows. Everybody knows I'm bad with names. I just describe people you know who I'm talking about. So, my one, Batman slash Bruce Wayne slash however you want to call him. That's my guy. Mm. No argument there. Batman made an honorable mention. I did not put him on because it was pretty apparent where you were going. It wasn't like, yeah, that's, it, it was a secret. And same then, like, right same here, with right Deathstroke. Up, like Save three, Destro, just... number one, three, number one. It's there. Like Deathstroke for you would have been a top three villain all time period. Like he oh, would yeah. have been the list. So, do you want to start with honorable mentions, or do you want me to go with my honorable? You know, mentions? Let, let me knock out my honorable mentions because I do got five. Of course, a close six was Deathstroke. The man. I mean, it was literally the only reason he's not on the list because I knew you were going to tell take. That's the only reason he's not five. Not taking anything away from Vegeta, but I like he go, he can't have both of them. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we usually tend to like the same characters. That's kind of like where so. We're and number seven, Punisher. Another Marine. Well, it's that he's he's a character that exacts actual been, revenge. Yeah, he does what he he's he's like a Batman character, but with no morals. He's like no. You're not coming back. I'm gonna kill you. Period. That's why he doesn't have any recurring villains, folks. Yeah, kill he them. doesn't. He's like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm not worrying about you no more. Uh, then I have Moon Knight. Of course, you knew Mark Spector was going to be on here. Another Marine. And then John Stewart. <laughs> no, I actually didn't have John Stewart on here. He was a close number eleven. Really? You you kept the I mean, Marine off the list and the best black Green well, Lantern off the list? Like, I'm it's it's, it's, it's because I looked and I was like, you know what? I got to go with one of the first characters I literally fell in love with. Boba Fett. The Bounty Hunter of few words. See, that's what I'm... You see, you see why? But then I also, the, my last guy that knocks off my top ten... It's one of the greatest characters I think was made, and he was made for one purpose, and he served that purpose, and every time he comes back, he's the kind of guy that if you see on the comic book page, you're like, oh, shit, about to go down. Doomsday. Doomsday. <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> if you see him anywhere, shit about to go down. He's, it's he's about not, to be... His name is not Happy Day. It is Doomsday. And yes, Doomsday can beat the Hulk. I don't care what y'all fuckers say. Doomsday has no limit. Because oh, Superman please. already killed him with brute force, so he can't be killed again by brute force. Anyway, so that would just kind of make him purpose to that. And if you've seen Justice League Apocalypse, have you seen it? I have seen it. So the Paradooms? Yikes. They were <laughs> a mixture of... He was like... Mm. It was like the Parademons and Doom. Because that's like, the what? one where uh, Batman becomes the head, like, lieutenant... Of Doomsday yep. and Luther yep. as well. And Luther, of course, betrays because that's what Luther does. Well, Luther betrays because, again, Luther is going to do what's good for humanity. That's his goal. That's why he hates Superman. Luther is, in his eyes, the greatest human. So when he puts himself, it's straight narcissist, when he puts himself on that pedestal, and then everybody starts like, yeah, Luther, Luther. And now you got an alien coming down who's trying to keep you in check and he can fly and now you're looking up at somebody no narcissist wants that no narcissist will ever look at, at somebody else no nope. so this is why he does not like superman he's like and again he got that mind mindset what if he goes bad 
And what like, can if we he, do if to stop read him? Injustice, you know what happens when he goes bad. Right. So it's like y'all are putting all y'all faith in him staying good. What if he goes bad, just like Batman? If you haven't read Tower of Babel, if you haven't seen Justice League Doom, watch it. It's literally a Batman story on how he beats the Justice League. Because he had a preparation plan for everybody. 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 And you can't hate it. So, yes. Not mad at Luther and his thought process, but that's just what he does. I feel like an honorable mention for you, like, under that would have been Toto somewhere from Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes. That, that's your boy. But, but he doesn't have enough under his belt to knock any of my tail. Yeah, because it's only one season so far. We haven't yeah, seen so, season two. We haven't read the my, manga. So that's this my is up with you. Um, for me, at number six, I had Yami Sukihiro from Black Clover. He's the okay, captain see. of the Black Bulls. He's badass as hell. You will, you'll just look at him and be like, that's my character. I don't have to explain it. Once you see him, you'll get it. It's very, very self-explanatory on that one. Um, let's see. At seven, I had Fushiguro, Jujutsu Kaisen. I really fuck with that character. Absolutely all about it. At eight, I had Pain. Um, let's see. At number nine, if I can read my own handwriting, I had Batman. Because, you know, Batman. You're, just, you're not going to exclude him from a list like this. Taskmaster was close there, but no. I didn't. The comic book Taskmaster. Not the movie, obviously. And Not then at number this. 10, um, from Demon Slayer, I had Inosuke. Yep, that's my dude. <laughs> Run around in a boar's head, just wanting to fight everybody. Just like, hey, man, that's my dude. can I say when he got those swords crafted, of course, you know, I don't know people, the guy came and brought two new swords to him. Mm. That motherfucker started beating that shit with a rock. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> See, that proves that I've been watching this show. Yeah, it's, it's a damn good show. It's one of the it's, best it's, animes I've seen. Period. It's not better than Jujutsu, though. It's not better than Jujutsu. It is the number two anime in the world, and we will be doing a What's the Topic on that once we get David back and once we get Will back in the fold. But that is our What's the Topic, our favorite characters. We went a little bit long because we always get passionate about this stuff. Be sure to check out Basically. the QR codes on the respective side, left and right of me. Just bring your phone over them, and it'll take you where you need to go. Be sure to check us out, the audio-only version, on anchor.fm slash Geek, where we're over a 1,000 listens. We're trying to get another 1,000 more. We're trying to keep pushing out amazing content for you guys, so be sure to like, be sure to be subscribed, hit the notification bell, so anytime we push out new content, you guys can come and enjoy it. As always, we have Tony up top, the man who just absolutely loves recording. He's an amazing co-host and our NFL czar on Gag on These Balls, coming in with hot topics every single day. We have a lot of good content coming up. We have a lot of stuff in the works. And I've been Brent, your host. As always, I just kind of run tech. So, Tony, you want to say something? Oh